Pokemon is a game of continual improved board presence where you're trying to build up the number of attackers or energy that you have in play to overwhelm your opponent. And it's not that often that a game can be won by a player who did absolutely nothing for multiple turns and just flick on the switch and win the game. But that's exactly what happened. This is the Pokemon TCG equivalent of hitting a grand slam in the bottom of the ninth with two outs to win the game. If you love comebacks, if you love epic turns, then this is the match for you. Let's take a look. Welcome to the history of Pokemon TCG, where we take a look at some of the most iconic competitive battles of the past. I'm JW, Flex Daddy, and we're gonna look at a match today that might just blow your mind. We have a player who went from absolutely nothing to absolutely everything at one of the biggest moments. Let's break it down. Now, if you've been watching the Pokemon trading card game for any number of years, either playing it competitively or watching streams, you'll know these players' names. Azul Garcia Griego is maybe one of the most accomplished American players, having won six regionals and performing on nearly every stage of competitive Pokemon. At the same time, Alex Shemansky is a player who has also been around a long time, performing at the regionals, worlds, international levels, but just has come up short in every regional that he's played, failing to win a single one. Still has a lot of great accolades. Hey, even won the Players' Cup 4 this last weekend, but hasn't quite won a regional championship. The year is 2019. The tournament is the Greensboro, North Carolina Regional Championships. Again, Alex is looking for his first win. Very, very motivated to play well on this big stage. Azul, been here before, but in a bit of a hole. Uh, Azul playing the Blastoise deck in the expanded format, so using Archies to draw up to five cards, get a Blastoise out, and start attaching a bunch of energy to various Pokemon in play. Alex, on the other hand, is playing a sort of attacking Zorark deck featuring Garbodor, which shuts down abilities. There's a lot of counterplay between that Garbodor and opponent's Pokemon, right? Because abilities such as Shaman EX, Execute, Blastoise, are all very important for Azul. And shutting them down with the Garbodor's Garbotoxin ability is gonna be crucial for Alex to win the game. Now we're gonna pick up the action here in game three. Each player has won a game. And I just wanna point out here the position that Azul is in. He's got an Eevee Snorlax on the board and it's cheered a couple of times, attaching some energy to benched Pokemon. And it's already been swung into once. You can see the board position on Alex's side. He's got Zorak in the active. That's hitting for, you know, 100, 120 per turn, 140 per turn, somewhere in that number. Uh, so two shotting a lot of Azul's Pokemon. And he also has a number of benched Pokemon set up as well. Zorak, Zerua, Sudowoodo, the Ditto Prism Star, which can evolve into any stage one, and that Garbodor. Now, notably that Garbodor with the Garbotoxin doesn't have a tool, but it will very soon. So abilities are still available to Azul, but they will go offline in just a second. Alex has just taken three prizes onto that uh, EV Snorlax from knocking it out. And Azul, again, is almost dead to rights here. Doesn't really have much going on, has to attach, has to play a Tate and Liza. That is the supporter card being played. Tate and Liza allows you to shuffle your hand into your deck and draw five cards. So again, let's paint the picture. Alex has three prizes taken already. Azul has not taken a prize at all. Azul has no Pokemon in play that can really attack for any meaningful amount of damage and doesn't have a Blastoise either, which is the biggest card that you want to uh, have out for this deck to accelerate the energy, get your attackers set up and get something going. So at this point in the game, Azul retreats into the Execute and passes over to Alex, not wanting to give up the two prizes from the Shaman and just kind of preserving that energy maybe as a retreat option for the next turn. Azul has paired his hand down to one and that is the Archies uh, so he can get the Blastoise out on the next turn. Now, crucially, I wanna just pause the video here. Crucially, you'll count one, two, three, four, five, six Pokemon on Alex's bench that all have less than a hundred health. That is going to be very crucial coming up because Magikarp and Waylord is the one way that Azul can get back into this game. 
Magikarp and Wailord has the GX attack that allows you to spread 100 damage onto all of your opponent's Pokemon. And so if he's able to get that off, he could take six prizes in one turn. Now, it's going to be very difficult. Uh, you're gonna see Alex here is going to play a Guzma onto the Shaman, go down to one prize left. He's also gonna attach that Float Stone to the Garbodor, which locks all of Azul's abilities. It's just the worst position possible. There's really nothing that Azul can do. He has no abilities. He's down one prize. All Alex needs to do is find another Guzma or just a knockout in some way, and he will win the game. Maybe he can use the Oracorio to snipe three times onto that execute. It is very, very bleak for Azul. Azul's gonna take his time, use a Battle Compressor, try to find something. That's the card that he ripped off the top. So he has the Archies in hand right now. The Archie's Ace in the Hole is in his hand, the only card, so we can go ahead and play that down, get the Blastoise out, and start to do something. But again, Alex is just a retreat and an energy attachment. He can probably go in with that Oracorio, snipe the Execute, and call it a day, pack it up, go on to top four, and hopefully win his first regionals. So Azul discarded three energy cards off of the Battle Compressor, cards that he's gonna to wanna to draw into later, but doesn't necessarily need in the deck right now, as he's going to need to draw into things like Field Blower, Ultra Ball to get the thing uh, rolling, to get the game rolling. He does get the Archies out. The Blastoise comes onto the bench, and now he has to search for a way to figure out how to get this energy attached. So, we'll see it here. He's looking through his deck. There's an Order Pad. This is the most crucial flip of all time. He does get Hez, and that's gonna allow him to go for the Field Blower, to get rid of that tool on the Garbodor. So Field Blower in hand. It's gonna go ahead and Field Blow away that tool. Crucially, crucially, Azul doesn't Field Blow away the Stadium. Now that would have forced Alex to discard one Pokemon. And just again, notice if he would have discarded that one Pokemon, there would have only been five Pokemon on the bench with less than 100 health. So, he wouldn't have been able to win with the Magikarp and Wailord. Just very important to know, very subtle, but you want, may wonder why he didn't get rid of that stadium. That is the reason. So continuing on with the turn, Execute is coming to hand. And it's also important to note for Azul that he only has one bench slot available. That Sudowoodo now goes back online. And so Azul can only play one Shaman. Azul can only play one, you know, more support Pokemon down to try to draw cards. We see another Battle Compressor here from Azul, looking for cards, trying to figure out what he can draw into, what he has uh, to play, the resources that he has left. He's gonna discard a few cards that he just doesn't need any more of that stadium. He's not gonna need uh, the, the Volcanion Prism Star. He's not gonna need, uh, and so he's gonna get rid of a few things here. So here comes the crucial draw. We see a Shaman for six cards set up with a blank hand is gonna get six cards here. And he's gonna look for energy, as much energy as he possibly can to flood the bench. We see a trainer's mail coming up with that superior energy retrieval. He's got superior energy retrieval, the computer search, plenty of execute to get this whole thing pulled off. <laughs> and it's really a joy to watch. So computer search, gonna get an energy retrieval. He's got enough cards in hand with that propagation execute to go ahead and take the knockout. We see the energy flood onto the active Magikarp and Wailord. The GX attack is announced and it is an unbelievable finish for Azul. This was one of the most exciting games to watch. I remember almost jumping out of my seat, just noticing that, oh, hey, there is a route to win the game that maybe 1% chance or 0.1% or chance for Azul to win, right? Remember what he had to do, that crucial turn where he had to flip heads on the order pad to get the field blower. He was just dead in the water there and came back, won the game with a ridiculous GX attack, the likes of which we may never see again. I wanna leave you with arguably one of the best and certainly one of the most hype calls in Pokemon TCG history. Let's take a listen to Kirk and Jeffrey as they call this final turn. There's one. Superior one. Wait, does he have the other one in hand? You got does he have the other one in hand? There's a email. Is there, there's an order pad. There's it's a computer, computer search. search. No! Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> he freaking did it. Oh! He freaking did it. Towering Splash, <laughs> GX, taking the bench, clearing the bullpen. He took them all out. Oh my. They took them all oh out. Oh my God. 
Alex just oh, just falling victim to this. See, our PTTGO, this is where you see the game over side, but Alex this has is, to accept this. This. Is, this, is, this is STL. I'm sorry, kid. You got blown out of the water. Azul, good game. Coming through. Flip the GG. Tyrix Crash <laughs> for the game. <laughs> what? Six what? Six what? Prizes. Bro, six give me that. Prizes. What? Heck what? Yes. Do you have another iconic Pokemon TCG match that you want me to feature? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, remember, good luck and also have fun.